Hi, people. Welcome back to Perspectives. I am Martina with my lovely co-host. What's that? Hey, hey, hey. So we are back, actually, um, to wrap up our series around identities. And we've had some really good conversations with our guests. And hopefully by now, y'all should have seen those. So if you have not, go back and watch. Um, or uh, listen to it on Spotify or iTunes. Our likes and subscriptions really help us out. So please go back and do that. Um, but really, you know, this last episode or two, just gonna be me and Lisette. Uh, you see our lovely faces. Um, I'm sure you missed us. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna be like doing a little bit of kind of a, I don't wanna say all over the place. We're not all over the place, but like a recap. Yeah, of the series and like probably talk a little bit about things we identify with or things we didn't identify with. But, you know, that's really how we're going to, you know, kind of wrap up this series. And uh, we have another series coming up soon. I'm not going to say what it is, uh, but be excited. I think good one. it's going to be a good one. We got some good, good speakers uh, yeah. good one for that one as well. And so stay tuned. We'll make that announcement Maybe, maybe in the new year. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. It's coming. Stay You'll hear about it sometime in January. When yeah. in January? You'll hear about it. You'll hear about it. So, but we're we'll super, it. super excited for that one too. And I think it'll resonate with uh, a lot of people. Um, yeah. and if it doesn't resonate with people, maybe it's an opportunity to learn something new um, and learn about our talks. So with that, said, I don't know, what we, where we want to start? What are you thinking? Oh my God, there's so much to to look back on. You know, I think even going back all the way to uh, the first episode of this series uh, with Grace, um, and then all throughout, I think for me, and I think I'll just kind of talk about broadly the overall series. So it's who am I? Right, like who am I? A conversation with women for women, which I'm so glad we actually called it that because a lot because a lot of the times, you know, people will try to do a conversation and sort of you know we want to impact everyone, we want everybody to like. But I was like, no, like this is for women, you know, especially women of color. You know, we don't have a a lot of spaces where we can be our authentic selves all the time and I think that's really what I liked about this whole series and the conversations that we had the privilege to have with uh women of you know different ages and backgrounds and and professions you know and I think just having very real conversations I remember uh Sylvia Puentes episode where she started kind of getting emotional at some point, and I was like, man, like, this is a, a, a space where you can feel and allow yourself to be vulnerable, right? And I, and I think it, it was something very uh, special to me to kind of see and experience, because while you and I are vulnerable and open in our, in our, you know, in our channel and, and, and do that, like, um, we didn't really know how other women or other individuals were going to to be in this space, um, especially in this virtual space, right? Like, it's not like we're in a room together where, like, it, it can have a different feel, but the fact that I think all of the the women we had conversations with were just so real. Like, you know, you and I always talk about, and those that have been following, I talk about, like, how we always are having real conversations. Yeah. I think that's one of, like, our hashtags when we post anything, like, real conversations. Real conversations. And I think it, this series really just kind of showed that. Uh, and, and, and I learned so much from the women, but I think just the overarching kind of thing for me was just that honest and, and vulnerable space that we were able to, to have uh, and, you know, and allow uh, all these women to just come in and, and share their experience and their, and their knowledge throughout. So... I think that, that's just the first thing that comes to mind as far as looking back at on the series as a whole. Well, you know, you um, the being vulnerable. I, you know, even when we had our our kickoff at our you know at our, our meeting, we'll be in the series. Um, it, it it was really cool 
even in that space, because at the end, Sylvia had did, you know, she kind of have um, flipped the questions on, you know, you and I and, and the audience. And, you know, people have been vulnerable. They've been open. And I, I think it's amazing that, you know, some of these women don't even know each other, uh, but have been able to open themselves up and feel comfortable. So, I, you know, it's, it's almost like a pat on the back in the way that they felt comfortable enough to, you know, be vulnerable, you know, get a little teary eyed or, you know, um, to let us in because it can be difficult. And as, and as we always say, we talk about really heavy topics, um, you know, even though we try to bring a sense of levity to it, but these are really heavy topics, especially when we're talking about people identities and, you know, identities are such a big thing for people, whether, whether uh, it's identities that you place on yourself or how the world has identified you, um, they're just such a big part, I think, of our lives. And just really, again, it was amazing just to have people just be open to share. And I, I know Sydney was also another one where she got emotional as well. Um, you know, and it was just, you know, it's um, just a really amazing thing to see in this, to create that sort of space. And, you know, that's as we continue to kind of our, our journey of, of our podcast and of our um, YouTube channel, we want to continue having that space where people can, you know, be open and to share. And I think it's nothing too, like, you know, we are posting these videos and posting podcasts, the audios and, you know, sharing this with people that uh, you don't know, you know, any yeah. could be listening or watching this or doing both. And, you know, so it is a big thing. So I just want to thank all our speakers and our friends and families who attended the kickoff as well and was open um, because it is, it's, you know, to us, it is a big thing, um, that we were able to do. So, yeah, that was, that's a good one. Was that? That yeah. And I think you touched on sort of the, the identity piece, uh, that was, you know, the, the theme throughout all the episodes. And, um, I know that early on, on our channel, we did a sort of a, an interview series, Oh yeah, uh, with each Last other. Year, huh? That was probably one of the first things. We yeah, did. yeah. One of the first kind of series that we did, um, and kind of hearing uh, uh, Grace's and, and and Sylvia and Sharita's and uh, and Sydney's kind of journey with identity. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminded me of that of those conversations that we had, you know, like a year ago, uh, as we interviewed each other and, and sort of harking to sort of like, you know, our experiences with identity and, and then, you know, and I remember me talking about like, you know, growing up, uh, as, you know, as a daughter of, of immigrants or, or migrants that came to this country, uh, and sort of the, the journey that a lot of, you know, kids of immigrants go through and, and sort of that identity piece. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think Sylvia touched on that uh, a little bit and, and sort of really kind of brought to light sort of that conversation or that interview that, that you did uh, with me and, and really was like, man, like it's such a, a big piece, right? Like it's such a big piece to know where you come from to understand your history and, and and really kind of grapple with uh what you know when you look at your ancestry what it means and how you navigate that but also like what other people think of you right and what other people kind of label you and or try to label you and you know how do you defy that label um how do you maybe perpetuate that label, right? Like, what are you doing, uh, and, and how do you work to sort of say, like, no, I don't, I don't want to perpetuate whatever the label is, um, and and it just kind of really brought that to mind. This whole series of like the importance of of knowing your own history, but also like for people, particularly in the United States, because we're so divided there's so much racism there's so much uh -huh. everything that to understand the history of the united states right not to just understand it but like the real history right like the the actual history not real history yes it actually not, occurred 
you know, not the one that were like, oh, you know, textbooks, like, textbooks and, and sort of that, yeah. that have this like savior complexity for, for white people to like be the saviors in every single scenario of history. Um, when, you know, when that isn't true. And I think it just kind of brought that all up for me to kind of be like, man, like how do, I think for me is like, where, you know, what do we do? What, how can we shift this? How do we, you know, do something about it? You know, like, cause I, I was telling someone recently, I was like, you know, cause they were like, oh, you know, you know, the history is in the past, you can't change it and all this. And I was like, I don't think we're looking, I'm like, I don't think we're talking about looking to change history or, or do anything. I was like, but people don't even want to acknowledge what happened. Mm -mm. You don't want to acknowledge, they want to gloss over all of the bad things and, and sort of do that. And they don't even want to acknowledge the, the, the privilege, you know, that they, that, uh, that white people have in this country. Um, and, and, and it's, and, you know, and, and it's not privilege with money. It, it doesn't equate, money does not equate privilege and privilege does not equate money. There's just so many other ways to, yeah. to have privilege, yeah. um, and it just also so happens that white people in this country have a lot of privilege, privileges that other uh, uh, ethnicities don't and other races don't. And it's like, so like, it really made me think about how everything really stems from this identity piece, right? Like, who are we? Who am I? You know, what is my past? What is our past? What are those shared experiences? Uh, what are experiences that we need to acknowledge uh, and and have people ask forgiveness for? Um, and how do you rectify some of those things? Like we can't change it. Like it's so like you can't change it, but you can. I mean, the simple fact, the simple act of acknowledging history yeah. can make such a difference on a whole group of people's identity uh, of how they see themselves and how society sees themselves or sees them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, this, the whole, like, for me, it was like, man, there's so much to unpack from this, this series that we could just like make a whole other. We can just yeah. keep talking on and on. <laughs> I mean, it, it is true. You know, when I think of some similarities again with the guests, is that I think almost all of them, uh, um, families either moved to another country or moved mm -hmm. to a different neighborhood or um, did something so that they could have a better life. And you often hear that story, I think, with definitely kids who are uh, kids who have uh, uh, families who are immigrants or parents who are immigrants or even just people of color in general here in the United States. Because almost time you always hear like, you know, parents, and I think this goes across in many ways, the social economic status, because mm -hmm. all of us, you know, are not living in poverty, but, you know, we're not, you know, mm -hmm. some of us are middle class individuals, like every person of color doesn't have to be poor or yeah. have certain negative connotations. But, and I think it was really just a theme I noticed that whether they were in middle class or, you know, kind of really working to get by, um, the parents wanted them to have like, you know, to have an education or even going beyond that, just to have a life that was maybe somewhat different from how they grew up. And it's really got me thinking how that's often just a common theme that I think people of color can share. So even, you know, if you look at the Obamas, for example, you know, they both, you know, uh, both of them, uh, Michelle and Barack, you know, were fortunate enough to go to really good schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't necessarily grow up with money, but you know, they, yeah were able to go to these good schools. They ended up with obviously really good careers. And so, you know, their kids, you know, in return, they just, you know, it's just something that if you're a person of color, you just want, you want your kids to be able to just do more than what you've done mm -hmm. or to just be able to accomplish something that they necessarily may not have been able to do. And I just think that's often an amazing thing that we just, that we hear about. And my phone is ringing right now. So if you hear vibrating, <laughs> that is my dad calling me. Dad, I'm gonna call you back. I'm gonna call you back in a minute. And <laughs> I said a minute, like another hour probably. I'm gonna call him back. 
but yeah I just I just wanted to touch on that because I think yeah we were just talking about the uh, the uh, different connections just that we've noticed um and you know I did notice that too with uh, you and Sylvia some of the some of the connections are obviously being you know kids of immigrant families and you know I don't have that perspective and that's why I you know one thing that this that this outlet has given me an opportunity to learn about different people. That's why I say I always love learning about different people. I, I may be an introvert. I mean, I do good in groups sometimes, but I love like one-on-one. -on -one. I love talking yeah. to all sorts of people and, you know, male, female, everyone in between. I just love talking to people and getting to know people. And I, for me, this series has gave me a chance to just do that. And, you know, because I'm not Asian. You know, I don't know what it's like to be Asian or be Asian American to live that life. So it was great to hear Grace's perspectives um, and just, you know, what it's like to have yeah. that identity. And so, you know, again, I've just, I just learned a lot about the world in general um, that I think is amazing. And I hope people who are listening and watching this as well uh, have been able to maybe see themselves in yeah. some of the speakers. And even if you can't, maybe just understand a little bit more about people who, who may not be like you, who may be different. Yeah, I, I love the, the point that you touched on, sort of, even if you can't sort of relate, but kind of just see that 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 viewpoint, that perspective uh, of that individual and their experiences in the same country that you live in, right? Like, it, it, it's such... Exactly. yeah. You know, it's just fascinating to see and how, you know, these uh, stereotypes, you know, play such a huge role in uh, in someone's identity, right? And and how that plays out. And I think that that was something that uh, a, a different a thing that I saw throughout was sort of like, you know, their stereotypes, you know, of. Black people of Asian and and sort of those that are Latino and like and and then to hear how all of those different things and and thought process really kind of impacted one individual's journey with identity was like wow like you know we, I don't I don't think a lot of people realize or understand how impactful uh, stereotypes really are. Um, Yes. And, and clearly we see it. I mean, we see the current climate and you know, we understand what's happening in this country. Uh, so, yeah, there's people out here who are like, oh, it's, it doesn't mean anything. It's just the way it's always been. I was like, but someone gets traumatized by that. Yeah, and it doesn't make it right just because the way something's always been. Doesn't you know, right. and it's like, and I think this, like, listening to particularly grace because i i don't i i can't say that i have a lot of asian friends or a lot of you know individuals in my life that 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 are asian that i can sort of say like oh you know i've heard their stories and their journeys or things like that and and to hear her sort of share like her being you know going to a different country and then coming back and sort of what, how that kind of changed with just the stereotypes and everything and to kind of just see that and be like wow like yeah there's a lot of things that we are we have yet to learn for, about each other um and how you know people say like oh america is a melting pot but we, we're not no because they don't want you melting with each other <laughs> no, like, we're not a melting pot <laughs> really, no <laughs> we're just you know separate pots on, on, on the stove separate pots. yeah <laughs> on, on the stove that's good we are separate pots on a big ass stove so it's just yeah. you know we're all <laughs> I get it. And I think that that's sort of like, wow, you know, it, it, it really just kind of, I don't know if it like confirmed or reconfirmed or whatever, like everything that we've been talking about on our channel of like how, you know, white supremacy has made it harder for us to be able to fit in. Right. And well, that's uh, well, that well, I guess that is the objective of white supremacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you don't want to fit in, but like to kind of hear it play out uh, 
from different perspectives and I said like different ages and experiences and, and, and just just to just see it and to hear it and like you know it's not that we don't hear it or we don't live it but you're just like man like are we ever going to get to a place where equity is just the the norm right like we're where the word equity doesn't even have to exist right like you know so it doesn't yeah I, that, that's such a good point i think Again, we just had a conversation today, Lisette and I, talking with one of our um, one of our uh, potential speakers for the series I mentioned, and that you know that was kind of the question: like, if you don't have equity, what are we even doing? Yeah. You know, and of course, equity. You know, there are different ways to have equity, but then it's only really one way to have equity. Just you know, it is what it is, and it, it really just kind of made me think about you know. I've told you this, Lisette. These are one of the comments I really hate to hear, like on the TikTok. Okay, when you know they be having these sort of discussions about race and color and colorism, mm -hmm. and people from different ethnicities, and it's always it's always a white person. I can almost always guarantee. It's sometimes it's a bot because they like to store shit, but it's like, well, how are we ever gonna get anywhere if we don't all work together? Or like, well, I didn't do anything. My parents didn't cause this problem. I'm still like, I can't even talk to you. I can't even talk uh to you because you don't even see the bigger picture. Yeah. That's just like, you know, I, I'm just horrible things that have happened to other groups of people throughout history. I don't have to be of that ethnicity or that nationality right. to understand what they've been through, but I empathize with them, yeah. you know? And it's like, yeah, okay, no, I didn't cause this or I wasn't a part of this, but it don't matter. It's really just, at some points, just being empathetic to yeah. just understand the role that you might have played, maybe maybe the role you didn't play directly, or maybe the role you don't even directly or indirectly at all. But to have empathy and understand where people come from, um, that's what we need to have. And if you if you can't even get past, well, I I didn't do anything. I just I'm just here. I was born like this. I can't talk to you because you got some work you got to do. We all got work. But you got some work to got to do because I can't even talk to you. It's just a waste of breath. I'd rather talk to a Republican. I'd rather do that. I'd rather do that. Because sometimes you can get more out of them than what than people like that. Well, it depends on what Republican we're talking about. As I said, sometimes. Because those are the same. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. But that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation to get politics, but yes. But you brought you bring you bring up such a good point when it comes to you know individuals who say like well it wasn't me it wasn't my family it wasn't if you know I came from you know my ancestors came from Italy or Ireland and all these like you know and and they bring up these things I was like yet you still benefit from right privilege <laughs> like it it doesn't like if that it doesn't matter you know that's not the point of the matter the thing is and like to your point is like empathy like you can empathize and you can sort of see and acknowledge the wrong that was done to a group of people and the fact that that wrong continues to be done to this day like you don't have to go far back into history to see how these systems continue to benefit uh white individuals you know it just you know you, you just don't have to and and you know maybe uh in our next episode we can get into a little more of the politics and then equity conversation uh as we kind of hopefully wrap up uh this this series but you yeah, know I'm I, your hat. you know i'm glad you don't wrap it up. All like we're, I was like, I want to go. You know, like, if we're gonna go there, I want to go there and dig into it without having to. But I think it's such an important part of these conversations that we had with all these women is to shed light and and say like, we need empathy. Mm -hmm. You know, we need people to acknowledge the the wrongdoing that continues to be done. Um, in our corporate spaces, in our public spaces, in our faith spaces. I think with Sharita, we dug into faith in that last episode. Um, 
because faith is such a huge part of the fabric of the United States. Um, really? In many yeah. ways. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it is such, you know, and, you know, you, you look at, you know, God we trust and, you know, it, you know, and, you know, Pledge of Allegiance and all these things that kind of just perpetuate this, this faith thing. And um, I don't know if I said it on the episode, but I, I you know, it's like, to me, government does not equal faith does not equal you know religion or anything or god or or whatnot i think uh, a lot of people just kind of claim like well you know the bible says that you know that god puts you know leaders into power and all these things and i was like yes it can say that it doesn't mean that we blindly follow them (laughs) to the end of the world (laughs) for that like I always have a quote from my mama or my grandma. I always, I have to say, you always do. I love my them. grandma. My grandma is a woman of faith. You know, she's you know from Mississippi people. She's you know church every Sunday, Bible study, all that. And my grandma would say, she's like, you know, some of these leaders, you know, some of these uh, pastors and the faith leaders we have. And it was like, sometimes you get a calling, and that may not always be the Lord. So you got to be careful. Yeah. Where that calling is coming from. And there's a lot of that too. People think it was the Lord, but it's something else. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's I know we're going off on a tangent now. I know we're going off because we're wrapping this one up, but we actually said what you said to say that. <laughs> but, um, but if, you know, I don't want to get into it because we're going to get into it and it's going to take us, it's going to take us to left field. <laughs> I don't want to go left field right now. Well, but, you know, I, but, you know, I think with Sharita touching on that, I think it brought a very different viewpoint um, and a conversation I think is needed within, I think, our communities, our faith communities. Uh, I think it's, it's a conversation, particularly with the black and brown churches. Um, you know, I, we can, I can only speak Chicago because that's where I live, but I think it's, it's such an uh, important thing because I think some of our black and brown churches perpetuate white supremacy oh absolutely Mm -hmm. you know and and perpetuate this and and i think that was part of our conversation with sharita and i know we said we're we're gonna have her back to dig in Mm -hmm. to that uh in the future uh and i I think just overall this series just shed light on our shared experiences um shed light on experiences that i didn't even realize were happening yeah. uh and you know like w- with grace to kind for her to share uh the idea of elitism and, and, and sort of how that and, and and racism and and sort of the white supremacy how that all kind of is wrapped in together i was like wow you know you, you kind of just see that and you play it out and and to talk about that and and just sort of like that's a you know, you, you, you always kind of hear elitism as its own thing, but never wrapped into this idea of racism and, and, and colorism and, uh, and white supremacy and how it, 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 it's a lot of, it's the same thing. Like, it's not that you think you're, you're better, like you think you're better than someone because, you know, your skin is lighter or things of that. And you're like, you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that is elitism like that sort of right there and to kind of see that that perspective from her and to bring and, and shed light to that and sort of say like wow to continue that conversation uh in the future I think it's also one to dig in but I think overall and I know as we kind of wrap up this this episode of uh of some tangents mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know really kind of talking about this the series of who am I uh it was just a great experience overall and and one that I'm glad you and I took I'm glad it's one that our audience that you our audience uh took with us and uh and, and really just I think this is just the start of of that conversation um I think there's so many more perspective to to engage into this conversation of identity. Um, there's a lot more to dig in. Um, 
I think for me, digging in with the, the Latino community and and really kind of sort of like the whole, you know, Hispanic, Latino, what it means, what it doesn't mean, you know, when you think about Afro-Latinos and, you know, or you dig, you go, you know, Dominicans and you kind of think like all these different things and what it means. I think there's just so, so many more conversations to be had and I'm glad we we started it and I hope we continue it. I hope it's something that our, our channel is up for the challenge to continue that conversation. Yes, and that's all I'm gonna say because I can continue talking about this. <laughs> and we've said we had to wrap up three times, but stay tuned. Uh, we will be back for part two. Um, just kind of continuing this conversation, what we've been focusing on the last I don't know, 25, 30 minutes, maybe a little longer, sorry. Um, but yeah, stick around. Uh, part two will be out soon. So we will yeah. say au revoir for now. Um, and yeah, please watch, um, listen, subscribe, all that good Comment, stuff. please. Comment, yes, comment. We've had a few people comment on some of the videos, but you know, we always say as long as you're respectful, Everybody has different opinions. We don't expect everybody to agree, but we yes. would just love to hear people's thoughts, especially around this series. And even if you go back and look at some of our other videos, you can comment on those too. We get them, we see them, uh, and we definitely appreciate them. Um, and so thanks again. Uh, we'll see y'all soon. <laughs>